seven part series, one for each day following a week in my life, the life of a medical school mom. If you missed Sunday, make sure you go back to catch it and see what fun and studying we got into. Are you ready for Monday? Ooh, but before we get started, I just wanted to clarify that even though it's Monday and most of my peers at my school are on campus in lecture, I'm actually in a directed study pathway, so I don't have quite as many reasons to be on campus. It doesn't usually happen that way. I pretty much always have a reason to go Monday through Friday. I have a meeting or a quiz or an exam or a lab or some something on the calendar that makes me go to school. But as we're getting towards the end of the semester here, I have the luxury of getting to stay home a little bit more. Okay, let's get to it. Seven forty-three, and let's be honest, I didn't have it in me this morning to get out of bed before my daughter. Good morning. Hi. And now that she's awake, I'm still not really feeling it. Even though it's Monday, I get to study from home today, so I think I'll just rebraid my hair so that it looks a little less like a matted dog. Time to try to make myself look a little more awake. I guess I do something different with my makeup every day. Whatever works. <laughs> what is this? Every single time I put mascara on without fail. <laughs> Anyone here? Time to get some breakfast started. Grandma loves her bacon every morning, but she is out grocery shopping right now, so I will get a skillet of bacon going for her while I work on the rest of our meal. Can't forget to fill up that 40 ounce of apple juice flavored water. We are jumping right in to Sketchy Medical this morning to review HPV. Because these viruses are all review from my SMP last year, and since time is dwindling to prepare for tomorrow's microbiology quiz, I'm skipping the osmosis content and going straight to the high yield Sketchy Sketches for all of the quick facts that I need to anchor in my memory. Reviewed and let's do a little quiz to test the retention and comprehension. Sketchy quizzes really are awesome for testing your application of key concepts. Time to split screen this studying. I really miss having multiple monitors. If only I hadn't broken my second one yesterday. Anywho, we were just notified that a set of practice questions were made available to my class 
So I'm going to pause my reviewing to work on these. Practice questions are really the best way to assess your competence. So any chance you have to get your hands on some, especially from the writers of your exams, always make the time to test yourself. So with Anki on the left and my class document on the right, I'm going to copy and paste the practice problems into flashcards as I study them. I bold the parts of the question to focus on, do a little formatting, and then add the answer choices to a close deletion so that it works like a multiple choice flashcard later. I'm going to add a few descriptive tags before finishing the card. A lot of material overlaps across courses and I end up pulling from previous decks into new decks, so tags help me to keep things straight through all of the movement. Let's do a question together. But first, sometimes images don't copy or cut, so I'm just going to move this one out of the way for now. We will come grab it in just a second. I cut the question from the Word document and paste it into Anki. Things that stand out, fever, dysuria, and frequency, UTI anyone? Urinalysis. We have gram-positive cocci that cause UTIs, so we should be thinking staphylococcus at this point. The image shows an antibiotic resistance, so let's grab the image by itself and paste it into our card. We differentiate between staph epidermidis and staph saprophyticus by testing novobiosin resistance and it looks like the antibiotic disc on the plate in the image did not clear any of the bacteria, which leads us to Staph saprophyticus. Great, we know what the organism is and that would be the answer for a first order question, but med school questions are almost always second to fourth order. So we take it a step farther and are asked how the infection is acquired. Well, Staph Sapro is common among young females after intercourse. And that's the answer. Do you want to try another? Cut. Paste. Our patient has a painless circular rash on his legs. The rash has multiple rings with a central area of clearing. If that's not pathognomonic for Lyme disease, I don't know what is. He recalls having a tick where the rash is, further confirming our guess of Lyme disease from Borrelia burgdorferi. I could tell you lots about this spirochete, but for the life of me, I can't remember what the confirmatory test is. Probably the biggest reason that I use Anki is that it functions as a super easy to search repository of all the things that I study. I'm going into the browse feature. Let's see what comes up when I search Lyme disease. 105 notes. It's great that I have so many cards that mention Lyme disease, but that's far too many to search for the test. Let's add Western. Aha, yes. I can see the lecture slides from last year now. And just like that, I have made the connection in my brain and I'll remember it more easily going forward. Now that I'm confident in the answer to this practice question, I'll just add this tidbit to the notes below my card before finishing it. Almost done. One more question. This time we have a neonate. Important because you should already start filtering your options down to either bugs that can cross the placenta or be acquired during the journey through the birth canal. Baby has meningitis from a gram-positive cocci. Based on the gram stain, I'm thinking streptococcus. Catalase negative just confirms that we should be on the path of streptococcus as opposed to the catalase positive staphylococcus. To differentiate between the meningitis causing strep pyogenes and strep agalactiae, we can perform a camp test. Who's knocking? You need to do work? Yeah. 
gonna start some spaghetti and meatballs for lunch today. Only the water looks funky. Let's try this again. Still looks the same in a different dish. Like, that's so weird. I mean, I feel like I've boiled enough water in my several decades. I guess it does clear up, so we're gonna roll with it. Do you want spaghetti? No. Do you want meatballs? Yeah. How did my daughter make it a late lunch hour and not have her beautiful hair done? Mommy fail. But we are going to fix this now so that I don't just stand around watching water boil. I try to stay away from caffeine because it can be very helpful for my headaches. The wind is really picking up out there. It sounds so eerie. Let's get the treadmill set up for some studying. In just a few seconds, I have the treadmill in place and my computer monitor elevated so I can loosen up my joints during hours of studying without missing a beat or breaking my concentration. Now I'll start going through some parvovirus B19, erythema infectiosum, slapped cheek fever, fifth disease, whatever you wanna call it. Moving right along into the pox viruses. Um, well, the power outage just nearly knocked me off my treadmill and into my computer. We have power. We are making good time to finish up reviewing all of the organisms for microbiology today. I should be able to use a few hours today to dive into some OPP for a large exam I have on Thursday. I'm feeling positive. I'm in a good space and doing well. I've got this. Hold up. I just got a school email. Looks like we have an oral exam in microbiology tomorrow. That means we are going to forget about OPP for today since I need to make sure I can articulate the mechanisms for a list of 10 toxins. With this kind of news, I'm sure that my class is discussing in our chat. Wow, a speedy handful of my peers have already started pulling together all the details we need for our oral exams tomorrow. Let's see what they have and what I can contribute. Four thirty-five. The power is on now but keeps going out, so I need a little change of environment. Oh! Dear Amiga, yeah, we have to do surgery. Hi, Violet.
like we get some <laughs> snow on top of the wild winds this evening. Merry Christmas! The power went out at least 13 times. I started to lose count. I'm going to get back to studying and see how much I can pack in before we really lose power. I'm going to swing over to osmosis now to focus on the 10 toxins I need to master for the oral exam tomorrow. I really need to get a good understanding of what the toxins do. So this is a better resource for this foundational learning. Another school email. Ah, voting for internal medicine club officials. I'll take two minutes to check out the candidates and cast my votes for them. Wow, people wrote some really nice things about themselves. Popping back over to Sketchy because I really enjoy She Gorilla. I mean, Shigella. Time must fly when you're having fun because it's nearly seven o'clock now. Shoes. That must mean grandma is upstairs with justice. Do you want to go take a bath? I mentioned it in yesterday's video, but y'all, these cubes, they are a mess, but they look like I've got it together on the outside story of my life, right? They kind of smelled me. So, they should probably take a shower. Seven fifty-five, and I'm finally ready to relax. But it isn't until nine o'clock that Justice finally gives in to her sweet dreams. We made it through another day. I wasn't so sure with all those power outages. Thank you for taking a look into our Monday in med school. Keep an eye out for Tuesday coming up. Just as a reminder, this is a week looking at my second to last week of my first semester of my first year of med school. As a single mom, by subscribing to my channel and liking the video, you help us to reach others that might find this useful or at the very least entertaining. Be sure to leave a comment to let me know your thoughts and just remember that if this mom can do it, so can you. Mm -hmm.